What's going on, Rock Church? How y'all doing? Man, it's the first time I've seen it this pack before service began. I know. Man. Look at you guys. Early break is the word. This morning. Oh, my goodness. Well, welcome to our one service. We're going to have a little barbecue after, but right now, we are so excited for all the different things that we have planned for you. My name's David. Actually, your name's Chef David. My name's Chef, yes. Yeah, it's a lot of different things on yeah. Instagram. We did a little video if you're not following our Instagram. If, if you, you are see follow, it, not following, follow us on Instagram. There's a lot of cool stuff going Chef on. Chef David's going to be cooking up some kingdom food. Some, king, some hot cookies. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> but anyways, oh if you didn't watch it, you're not going to get it. Um, but, and, and this is Pastor Landon. Thank you. Brother Landon. Brother Bosman right hey. here. Hey. How we doing, Rock Church? How we doing this morning, Rock family? You know, I, I'm excited we get to do this. They asked us, they said, hey, uh, Land and Dave, will you guys do the pre-service yeah. show? And the first thing I thought of is immediately Sunday morning, football season. You know when you turn on the TV and you listen to Terry Bradshaw and his boys talk stupid <laughs> for yeah, a good 25 yeah. minutes, yeah, and you're exactly. sitting there like, these guys make some great points. <laughs> that's what I was thinking about us. We're the analysts today. Yeah. You know no, what that's I mean? great. That's great. That's a great way to put it, Pastor Landon. Yeah, so, we're the experts. So, dun, 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 dun. Uh, don't, no, don't, like, don't, don't, don't. <laughs> so we got some trivia <laughs> for you guys. Last year we did some trivia. We did it multiple choice. It was a little too easy. So this year we decided to not do multiple choice, but we upped the ante. We got some gift cards. That's right. Some gift cards to Cold Stone and to Starbucks. Ooh. So we got some questions, Ooh. some questions about summer and some questions about the Rock Church. So we'll see how faithful you are. All yeah. Right? We'll all see right. what you know and what you don't. So let's start. We got the first one here. Which one of our staff members used to be a bodybuilder? Larry over there with John Benson gets the first one. Congratulations, Larry. Good job. Good job, man. I don't know how you know that. That's interesting. Good for he you, Larry. He brags about it. If you know John, he'll show you yeah, the pictures. Yeah, he does. Ask him for the pictures. He'll show you. John's like, look at me when I was young. <laughs> right. <laughs> All right. So the second oh, one. Oh, my goodness. Is a summer-related question. What does SPF stand for? Right here. Oh, she didn't know. She just won a gift card. <laughs> Where we go? All right, Larry, you already won. Where are we in going? In the back. Who is that? I in can't see back, you. In the back, in that back row. It's Maggie. Sun protection Maggie got factor. It. Sorry, the the gloss in here. Is yeah, insane. there's a lot of fog. <laughs> I'm like, what is happening? Is this... All right, so you got the next. Do one. Do I got the next one? Yeah, okay. Yeah. All right. All right. <clears throat> Hey, this is a good one. For all you parents with young kids, what date does our children's ministry nursery plan on opening up? August 14th. Okay. There, go. there we no go. Amy. We got a mama with some babies in the house. She said, hallelujah, yeah, August 14th. Right? Thank you, Jesus. I heard that. <laughs> Man. Oh, man. Oh, man. Yeah, 100%. That's right. so good. So another summer one. What is the hottest summer temperature ever recorded in the United States? Ooh. 115, no. 135, who said it? Oh, it's 134, but we're going to give it to you. So. <laughs> <laughs> Does anybody know what city that it was in? Oh, wow, they didn't. Okay. Thank you, Overhead. I appreciate that. <laughs> All right. Making me look stupid up here. Okay, let's go to the next one. All right. Number five. What church event do we have coming up on Saturday, August 27th? All right, so yeah, we uh, heard it all over. That's awesome. We're communicating well. Yeah. It seems as if we got I'm really proud of y'all for answering these. For that one. Who's but gonna that raise was your hand first? All right, there we go. <laughs> block party. Block party. There we go. It's we the block party. Block party. Hey, and uh, can I just give a shout out to the block party? Because if you are not going to volunteer or have it planned on volunteering, you're in the wrong here. And I want to yeah. correct that thinking. <laughs> Sign up to volunteer for the block party because we are going to have an amazing time reaching out to our community. August 27th, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to do some amazing things for the Marietta and Temecula Valley. And we're so excited for that. Dave, what's our next question, brother? All right. So how old 
is our church. Ooh. Haven't heard it. Who said it? 22 years. We're not 20. And what? What? How old do we turn? Time Excuse out. Me. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> they gave the mics to a bunch of goofballs. Oh up man. There. <laughs> they said, Pastor Landon, and Dave, you guys figure this out. They didn't realize we're men. We don't know anything. <laughs> Okay. Lord help us. Uh, you know what? We we're gonna <laughs> give it to 22 because that's how old we're turning. Yes. We are turning that's 22 in November. Yeah. And we. Wait, anniversaries, everything. I claim it before it happens. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. David's like on eight years of marriage. He's like, man, these 10 years have been crazy. Yeah. These, ten, <laughs> these 11 years, bro. He's like, you guys just celebrating your 20th? No way. We're right there, bro. Right. <laughs> Oh my yeah, God. that's why he doesn't identify as a 30-year-old. He's still 20 in his mind. Okay. <clears throat> All right, so the last one. No, we have one more. No, it's the last one right here. Is it? Did we skip? No, we skipped one. Where's, where's my item? Yeah, go ahead, man. I'm just saying, jeez. Okay, what is the most bought item in the summer in the United States? In the red shirt, it is swimsuit. Hey! <laughs> Somebody said water. <laughs> that's not a, that's not a bad guess. <laughs> Somebody said ice. <laughs> that's not a bad guess either. <laughs> All right, so that's 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 the answer Google gave me. Water yeah, makes yeah. Sense, but, yeah. <laughs> but Take where? It up with the Google. last question. Last question. Mm. Where can you give your ties Ooh. and your offering? Ooh. Listen to all of our past sermons Ooh. and find out everything. Get them. Everything. Get them. Going on. I'm Tell not em. done with the question, y'all. We're not I'm done not, with the question. Y'all are jumping. Cut it out. Y'all are a bunch of leapers. Find out everything going on. I'm not done with the question, y'all. Everything going on at the Rock Church. Rock Church app. Yeah. She made it till I was done with the question, y'all. <laughs> the rock. So our last, that was our last one. So Pastor Landon, after that little fun right there, and we really hope that you guys enjoy the cold treats that we want to bless you with. Yeah, that's Enjoy our Rock promotion. Church app right there. I didn't, you got a little anti-glare thing on it. So yeah, I no, I bought on. the wrong screen. Um, my wife hates it. Do you mind blessing us with some prayer over this one service? Oh, my because, goodness. Man, it looks like we got a full house going on already. I can't wait to see what I am what it's so like. excited. I know. Early bird gets the worm, and so we're just so excited that you guys are here this morning. As the worship team comes up, we just want to say that God has been doing some amazing things in the Rock Church this yeah. summer. And uh, we are just excited today because the summer's not over, but we get to just celebrate today as a church family, as a church body, come together united in celebration for what God has done and what he continues to do, that we truly are blessed here at the Rock Church. Yeah. And uh, I'm just so privileged and honored that, that this is my church family. And can, can we give it up for Jesus yeah. this morning, somebody? Come on now. Hallelujah. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to ask you if you're in the auditorium this morning or you're walking in, why don't you just stand to your feet as we get ready to worship, as we posture our heart this morning to honor God and give him the glory and give him the praise that he is so worthy of. Father, we just thank you. We thank you that you are our Abba. We thank you that you are the God who saves, who redeems, who restores. And Lord, we are so grateful that this day is the day that you have made. And it will be a day of celebrating and rejoicing yes, in who you are and what you have done in our lives. God, we come before you as the Rock family celebrating the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Let our hearts be loud and open today as we say Thank you, God, for what you've done this summer and what you continue to do. Bless the service today. Bless the barbecue today. Let today just be a fresh anointing and outpouring of your spirit upon your people here at the Rock Church. And God, we say we are ready and we are hungry for you. Move however you choose to move this morning. In Jesus' name, and the church said, amen. amen. Come on, Rock Church. Let's worship this morning. Come on, come on, come on. Are you ready to praise the Lord this morning? Oh, come on. Can we just, come on, put your hands together. We're, we're actually celebrating Jesus this morning. Can you give a woo in the house? Yeah.
Yes, let's do this. Here we go. Okay. Dumb thing. Okay, let's see. All right. Let's try that one more time. I think it's, let's see if it works. It's working. All right. Give the Lord praise in the house. Come on. Here we go. Yeah. Aren't you about to dance with this rock church? You're indescribable in every way. You search me out and now I'm caught up in your grace.
will pour out your thankfulness You made it overflow With the redeemed of the Lord Sing so yeah. There's a hallelujah After sweet victory Oh, there's no sound Louder than the captive set free Come on, you believe that? So there's no sound Louder than the captive set free So let the redeemed of the Lord Sing so Go sing of His promises Evermore Oh, pour out your thankfulness and let it overflow. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Alright, come on, I need everyone to sing this out with me. Oh, you are my deliverer, the freedom I'm living in. Oh, you are my deliverer, you are my promised land. Come on. Oh, you are my deliverer, the freedom I'm living in. Yes, you are. Oh, you are my deliverer, you are my promised land. You are. Oh, you are my deliverer, the freedom I'm living in. Oh, you are my deliverer, you are my promised land, you are, oh, you are my deliverer, the freedom I'm living in, yes, you are, oh, you are my deliverer, you are my promised land, just the voice. So let the redeemed of the Lord say so, hey. oh, sing of his promises, deliver more support. And pour out your thankfulness And let it overflow Let the redeemed of the Lord Sing so And pour out your thankfulness And let it overflow Let the redeemed of the Lord Sing so A shout of praise this morning. Come on now. Lift your voice. Oh, come on, Rock family. Let's give him praise in the house. Oh, you can do a better job than that, someone. Hey, isn't it, isn't it just awesome to be together this morning? I know there's a little bit of confusion. Some of you showed up at 8.30. I, I understand you've been here for a while. That's great. Uh, some of you have not showed up yet, but that's okay. And, uh, you know, whenever you change something, everybody freaks out. But that's okay. Because here, we have a motto here at the church. If you say, what's the motto with you? Here's the motto with us. Is that constant change is here to stay. Amen. And because uh, we believe in transformation. So I want you to do something for me this morning. Would you turn to your neighbor behind you, in front of you, beside you? And would you just uh, uh, welcome them today? Come on. go Step out of your seat and go say hi to somebody. Come on, do that today. Say hello. Greet somebody today. Welcome them. Tell them you're glad to see them. And as we are welcoming one another, I want to welcome our online audience, online and also outside. Uh, we are so glad that you are with us. So wherever you might be tuning in from, we just want to welcome you. We want to tell you we are so glad uh, that you are joining us. Uh, even if you're joining us online, we are so glad that you're doing it today. Now, uh, I get the honor and the privilege to kind of uh, get things in, uh, in motion. So there's something that we do uh, um, every, uh, every month. So here's what I want you to do. I want you to go ahead and have a seat. Would you just take a seat with me? Now, for those of you that are new with us, if you're a guest with us today, we want to give you a warm welcome. Can we give a warm welcome to our first-time guests? 
Oh, come on, you can do better than that. Come on, let's welcome them. And uh, if you're a first-time guest with us, there's a couple of things that uh, uh, we want you to know. First and foremost, we are so glad that you are with us. We know that you've got choices of a lot of great churches in the valley, and the fact that you're here today, we really appreciate that. We want you to sit back, relax, and have a great service with us today. Also, uh, if you want to let us know about uh, your visit with us today, uh, you can just text Rock Guest to 94000, Rock Guest to 94000, and uh, someone will kind of reach out for you. Or what you can do is right after this service, you can step right uh, through those triple double doors, and uh, our 41 one information station is over there and if you do that they will give you a little gift just a, a little something from us to say thank you for being with us today we really really appreciate it and if you're online if you're a guest with us online then you can text rock guest to 94,000 and let us know about your visit with us today and uh, we're really glad that you are here secondly uh, we have a thing that we do uh, on a monthly basis we celebrate birthdays how many of you know it's good to be celebrated I think we ought to do a better job than that. I mean, you don't like to be celebrated? I enjoy it. I really enjoy it. You see, I wore my amen shirt for you today. Do you notice that? So I'm just going to point and you say what? Amen. All right. So come on now. Which one of you don't like to be celebrated? I mean, we all like to be celebrated, right? Amen. And so we want to we wanna celebrate our August birthday baby. So... If you were born in August, uh, some time ago, or recently, or whenever, then here's what we want you to do. We want you to stand to your feet. So if you're an August birthday baby, would you please stand to your feet? Oh, yeah, just remain standing. Oh, come on, yeah. Uh, you need to be standing. Just remain standing. Remain standing. We just want you to know that we love and appreciate you. And uh, we are so glad that you join us today. So I know that pretty soon uh, it is Pastor David's birthday. I think one of these Sundays it's going to be his birthday. So that's wonderful. I know that it's PM's birthday. So that's wonderful. And I know that somebody is celebrating their 60th birthday today. With us, I'm not going to say because she told me she's actually 30. So, uh, um, well, she looks like she's 30, but uh, um, we are just going to just kind of keep it low key. But we want to celebrate her very, very specifically. Her name's Kim. Uh, uh, um, and uh, we want to celebrate her very specifically. So, can, can you do me a favor? If you are sitting around those folks, would you just reach out to them? Come on, stand up, reach out to them, put your hand on them, and we're going to pray a, a, a prayer of blessing. Would you do that for Pastor David? Come on back here, and we're going to just pray a, a prayer of blessing over our August birthday uh, uh, folks. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you for the privilege of being born. We thank you that what a gift you gave us. It's life. And we thank you. We celebrate life. And we celebrate each and every person that are celebrating their birthday in the month of August. We pray that you will bless their lives. We pray that you will heal their bodies. We pray that you will strengthen their minds. We pray that you'll provide for them. We pray that you'll open up uh, uh, doors that no man can close. We pray that blessing and, and, and comfort and peace will be their constant guide. We pray that your mercy will follow them all the days of their life and that they will be in the house of the Lord forever, that they'll be planted in your goodness, planted in your favor, planted in your mercy, that they will know that you are with them. And if God be for them, who can be against them? So we bless them today as, the, as their brothers, as their sisters. We bless them today and we thank you. Make their lives fruitful. Make their lives faithful and fill it with your goodness every day. We bless them now in the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. And everybody said, amen, amen and amen. Come on, let's give the Lord a shout. All right, go ahead and uh, have a seat. Uh, we have got a uh, wonderful thing that we're about to do, and we're going to celebrate uh, some of our interns. But before we do that, I want you to check out this testimony real quick. What's up, Rock family? My name's Chloe. I've been attending the Rock Church for a few months now, and I actually went through the internship program over the summer. 
During the program, I've just really been confirming with God what I'm supposed to be doing in my life and what the next season of my life is going to be looking like. Before I actually joined the program, I was a bit reluctant. Um, I heard God speak to me that I do need to be doing this, but I wasn't really sure how I was going to go about it until one Wednesday night at youth, one of the leaders actually walked up to me and asked me if I had signed up. And in that moment, I just felt God tug at my heart and really just say, hey, this is the next step that you're supposed to be taking in your life. And right after that, I jumped into the um, program. I was a week late, but I still jumped into it. And ever since that, then God has really just been showing me himself and what he wants for me in this season of humility and discipline and just really understanding what God looks like in everyday life. During the internship, God has really just brought me a community in my life that I've never really had before. Um, before all of this, I've just been kind of on and off with friends, but since then, I just, I found a community that wants to walk with God and desires God, and seeing them really just humble themselves and serve, even when we were cleaning up the sanctuary or when they were mopping the bathrooms, just in stuff like that, that doesn't seem like it makes a big difference, just makes all the difference to God. And it was just really incredible to be in that season with other people surrounding me. I think one of the things that's been the most impactful um, is seeing the behind the scenes of every ministry and the heart and the desire and passion that each one of these students has been pouring into um, in youth, in worship, in children's, and seeing how each one of these students knows that what they're supposed to be doing right now is going through the internship program. And even in the Be Salty campaign, just really putting our summer into perspective and just making sure that the things that we do during the summer is intentional and staying intentional throughout the rest of the year um, is just so incredible and I'm so excited to see where it takes the rest of the church next. Over the summer, God has really just taught me how to stay humble in Him and just press in and I encourage you to press in too. Whatever ministry God's calling you to do, whatever program God's calling you to do, I encourage you to just step into that and really press into what God wants for your life in this next season. Amen and amen. Well, you know, as, as those of you that are here on a regular basis on a Sunday morning, you know that service is going to be a little bit different. But we want to honor Pastor David. Would you come uh, with me? And um, we are going to ask the interns if they uh, could come uh, to the front. And uh, uh, we just want to honor them. And as, uh, let's get them up here, and then we'll give them a great God bless you as they come. Come on, interns. Come on, let's give them a hand. As they're coming, Guys, basically, this bit. was a six-week internship, and, you know, we wanted to lay that foundation. Some of the young adults, you know, have had the summer off, but these guys came twice a week for, you know, several hours on Tuesday and Fridays. We taught them on the Holy Spirit. Pastor Henny taught a leadership class. Pastor Landon taught an apologetics class. We also had another class I taught on identity. Just really essential foundations, and that's what the goal was to having the interns and did you guys love it did you get something where's chase he's back there okay him he, and corbin he refuses to come we and, do have a couple of rebellions ones and yeah that, we got uh, corbin they didn't get anything they out are of the actually, course they're they, gonna have to go through the course again so uh, <laughs> yeah yeah but, but just to, let me just say this pastor david we do we did have some other interns from other churches and uh, that were part of the program, and we encouraged them to serve at their local churches. So uh, this is not everybody that was here, but we did have some of those, and we really appreciate that as well. Yeah. All right. Uh, first, we have Maya Valverde. We got Sarah Sumra. And this one's really special to me, Dion Archibald. <laughs> She got an A+. Plus. <laughs> Hunter Smith. <laughs> Belinda Basson. <laughs> Julia Blount. <laughs> Chase, you don't get one. 
Yeah! Corbin Ackerman, he's back there, way back there at the soundboard, Corbin. Yeah, I grabbed him. Chloe, Chloe Ohonen. Chloe! Yeah. And Kiana didn't make it, did it? We had another young lady, Kiana uh, Grantham. Oh, I didn't know you she, she told me she was going out of town and she snuck up here. <laughs> Kiana! <laughs> And Micah Basson, which is uh, right here, we have mom. her mom, and we could give it to her. Uh, Deborah Masawe. <laughs> is Blake here? Is he in the kids? Blake? Blake is He's serving. He's in the someone. kids already serving. Woo woo, Blake. <laughs> uh, Samantha Waltney. Did I say that right? Sammy. Uh, and we learned practicing our speaking in tongues with some of these last names. So anyways, guys, these guys did the internship, and they did an amazing job. And we love you guys. God has an incredible future. Amen. Thanks for participating. Some of you, if you have, next time you hear the internship, you got to come and be a part of it. It was a powerful family. You got a foundation laid. And anyways, yeah. just give them a hand. God yeah. bless you guys. You could be dismissed, guys. Oh, come on. We can do a better job than that. I, Deborah, you have the mic. I, why don't you just say a few words uh, um, about she thought that she was, she was praying that we don't do this. So uh, let me just say this about uh, many of the interns is that many of them are going to college and, and uh, so on and, uh, you know, going to do, take that next step of their life. And we want to make sure that we lay a foundation. And uh, honestly, I believe that there's a move of God in the horizon. And uh, I have a lot of hope. And you know why I have hope? I have hope because of young people like this. I have hope because I know that there are young men and young women that have a desire to honor God despite what the culture says. The culture yells real loud. And the culture's in your face all the time and telling you what to do, what not to do. And if you don't do what culture says, culture will cancel you. But, uh, you know, we, we, we believe in cancel culture, and this is the cancel culture we believe in. And that is that Jesus took our sin, nailed it to the cross, and canceled it. So that's the, that's the cancellation we have. And so that means we are, we are all on the same footing because of His blood and because of His grace. So, Deborah, just take a minute. And, and tell us uh, uh, maybe uh, what you got out, you personally got out of the internship program. Of course. Well, hi, everyone. My name is Deborah, and I participated in the internship this year. For me, as someone who's going back out of state for college, who's going to be a sophomore at a really big school, I think the internship has really equipped me in ways that I didn't expect it to. You know, growing up in the church, I was like, maybe I'm going to know some of the stuff they talk about. But I still feel like I learned so much, whether that be in apologetics or redefining my identity in Christ or even just servant leadership. I really feel as if I'm going to take all that I've learned and go back to my campus and be able to love the community that God has put me in and to also share the gospel. So, Amen. Awesome. Amen. Where's, where's Hunter? This is Hunter. He is only 16 years old, but he has a beard. <laughs> he was actually born like that. He came out and his mother went, hey! So uh, he said, he actually didn't say anything. He started singing and she knew that he had a singing ministry. Hunter, tell us a little bit about what the internship program meant for you. So, well, he said my name. My name's Hunter. Um, the internship was just... Uh, just an unreal, just amazing opportunity. Not only the, the tight-knit group that got formed in this community, but there's something really special that happens when you, you put God first and you put Him as your number one desire. You put Him back in His place of being our first love and wanting to learn more about Him. And when you value His Word, He'll keep speaking to you. And it was just an amazing opportunity with some of the best leaders I've ever had the privilege of being under. Um, putting the time and really putting their heart and passion pouring into us. It's, it's 
something that's priceless and it's really a valuable opportunity. So next year, I encourage you all to join it. Amen. Seriously. Well, let's give them a great God bless you. Thank you, kid. Shall we all stand to our feet? Let's stand to our feet and uh, we're going to continue in our worship this morning. There is no 
Let's lift up our hands and let's declare that He reigns above it all. Father, we thank You today that there is no higher name. There is no other name by which men can be saved but by the name of Jesus Christ, our King, our Savior, and our Redeemer. We thank you today that this is the day that you have made, that we will rejoice and be glad in it. And we say like David said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Because may this day be a day where you touch our hearts. May you unite our minds and may we recognize and realize that you are worthy of all praise. We adore you, King Jesus. Come and be enthroned at the Rock Church. We pray for other churches in this valley. We pray that you would touch them. We pray, Lord, that wherever the gospel is being preached this morning, all over the world, may people hear the clarion call of what you are saying. May truth be proclaimed and may Jesus be glorified. Throughout this valley, may Jesus be glorified in the north, the south, the east, the west. Throughout this valley, may Jesus be proclaimed. Throughout this valley, may Jesus' name be the only name worthy of praise and adoration bless you today and we thank you and everybody said amen Amen and amen let's give the Lord a clap offering that he is worthy of amen you may be seated this morning as you know that uh, um, service is going to be a little bit different but one of the two things that we are doing and celebrating is uh, you know we are doing the sacraments that the Lord instituted And so if you did not get the communion elements when you came in, uh, just uh, raise your hand. Keep it raised so the ushers can see if you don't have it. That way we can get the communion elements to you. If you're sitting outside, there will be somebody outside uh, that can get the communion elements to you. And uh, if you're at home, uh, why don't you prepare uh, right now the communion elements uh, as we go to the Word of the Lord today. And uh, I think it's very important that we do share God's Word. Amen. And uh, then just before I start, I just want a a quick reminder. Please do not forget, next week, what time is service time next week? 9 and 11. Don't forget. So it's not going to be 10 o'clock. It's going to be 9 and 11. If you come at 10 o'clock, you are going to miss most of first service. Are you with me? So please make sure that you are reminded of that. Well, we have been in this incredible series uh, called what? Be salty. And today I, I just want to take a brief moment and just share uh, the word of the Lord with you. And in Matthew 5, 13, it says, You are the salt of the earth. But what good is salt if it has lost its flavor? Can you make it salty again? It will be thrown out and trampled underfoot as worthless. But I want you to focus on this next verse. Notice what it says. You are the light of the world. Say, I am, I am the, light the light of the world. Like a city on a hilltop that cannot be hidden. Watch this. No one lights a lamp and then puts it under a basket. Instead, a lamp is placed on a stand where it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your good deeds shine out for all to see so that everyone will praise your heavenly Father. One of the things that we have determined here at The Rock, especially during the summer months, and we know that a lot of people go on vacation, a lot of people go on repose, a lot of people go on, you know, relaxation, and that's great and that's wonderful. We all need vacations. We all need breaks. Can I get an amen for that? We all need time off. That's good. That's healthy. That's part of, uh, of the Sabbath rest that God has instituted for all of, for all of us. But uh, one of the, the decisions we made several years ago at The Rock, and that is that we, uh, no matter if it's summer, winter, uh, spring, doesn't matter, we are always going to pursue God. 
And uh, so we've, we've, over the last several years, we've had this focus and this emphasis during the summer months so that we can really have, have uh, a desire to continue moving forward. And uh, this year, it's been Be Salty. And, and I don't know if you've been part of, the, part of the series or not, but if you haven't, you really should listen to some of the messages that is, that is being proclaimed. And uh, uh, next week, we will continue even more of that. And then the following week after that, we have uh, another incredible guest speaker uh, with us by the name of Dr. Baron Gilflin. Dr. Baron Gilflin has the largest Bible college in the world. And uh, the largest Bible college means that he are in more nations than any other Bible college and has uh, graduated more students than any other college. It's an incredible thing what God has done through the ISOM curriculum. That's the International School of Ministry and uh, Good Shepherd's Ministries. And he will be with us on the 21st. Make sure that you mark your calendars for that. But let's jump on in right here. Uh, we are that city on a hill. And the only people that can confidently say that is us. Do you realize that? Uh, you, we can't say it as a nation into which we are either born or adopted into physically. It is the church of the firstborn. It's us. Uh, bought and paid for by the blood of Jesus Christ. It is those who have been born again by the Spirit of the living God. So a city on the hill means that we have to shine because Jesus says we have to shine. So I'm going to just give you a few thoughts uh, this morning on what does it mean for us to shine and, and how do we shine? Does anybody want to know how you shine? All right. This has got nothing to do about how shiny you are. This is how we shine together. All right. First of all, and for those of you who don't understand, but this is very, very important. We shine through corporate worship. We shine through corporate worship. What we are doing this morning, this is called corporate worship. Meaning that we all worship at home. Yeah. We all worship at home. Give me an... That was not a trick question. <laughs> you better be worshiping at home. Otherwise, I have to change my sermon right now. So we all worship at home individually. Is that true? Yes. We worship at home individually, but then there is a thing called what? Corporate worship, where we don't worship by ourselves. We worship with others, especially our brothers and our sisters. And we understand that because of that, we've not come like in the Old Testament to a physical mountain. We have come to the Mount Zion, the city of the living God. And I want you to notice, uh, listen to, to, to what we have to understand. And I need you to get this today, that when will we realize that we are not some dinky operation trying to survive, but we are part of a heavenly host that have already overcome. And I want you to listen to what the Bible describes you and describes me. This is us. This is who we are. Listen to these words in Hebrews 12 verse 18. Now you have come to Mount Zion, to the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, and to countless thousands of angels in a joyful gathering. Somebody say joyful gathering. Do you know that there's a lot of joy in heaven? There's a lot of joy in the presence of God. Some of you think that God is an ogre. He's not. Some of you think that God is there to spoil your good time. He's not. As a matter of fact, you cannot have a good time without God because He's the only one that is good. Look at verse 23. You have come to the assembly of God's firstborn children whose names are written in heaven. You have come to God Himself who is the judge of all things. You have come to the spirits of the righteous ones in heaven who have been made perfect. You have come to Jesus, the one who mediates the new covenant between God and the people and to the sprinkled blood which speaks of forgiveness instead of crying out for vengeance like the blood of Abel. Aren't you glad for that? So you've come to a joyful gathering. You've come to a, a place of worship. You've not only come to a place of worship, you've come to the gathering of those that have gone on before us. You not only have come to that, you have come to a bunch of angels who are celebrating right now in joyful accolation and in joyful worship before the very throne of God. You are not part of something that is losing. You're part of something that has already overcome. You have come to God. And how did you come? Through the blood of Jesus. Why, a blood that speaks of better things than Abel. Abel said, I wanted vengeance, but Jesus' blood says you are forgiven. That, that is powerful. Look at this. Be careful that you do not refuse to listen to the one who is speaking. For if the people of Israel did not escape when they refused to listen to Moses, the early messenger, we will certainly not escape if we reject the one who speaks to us from heaven. When God spoke from Mount Sinai, his voice shook the earth. 
but now. Somebody say, but now. now. Watch this. He makes another what? Promise. Once again, I will do what? Not only the earth, but the heavens also. This means that all of what? Help me out. That all of what? Will be what? Shaken and so that only what? Unshakable things will remain. Now, if he, if he stopped there, we would be like, ooh, I don't know if I'm going to get shaken. Now watch this. Look at the next verse. Since we are receiving a what? A kingdom that is how? Help me somebody. A kingdom that is how? Unshakable. Let us be what? Thankful and please God by doing what? Worship Him with holy fear and awe, for our God is a devouring fire. The way that we are demonstrating this light is by us coming together and realizing that we don't just gather. This is not church as normal. This is understanding that God wants to do something and display His glory in a way that some of you have never experienced. Another way we shine, let me just go through real quick. We shine through mutual affection. Through mutual affection. Look at John 15 verse 9. This is Jesus speaking. I have loved you even as the Father has loved me. Remain in my... Is it on the screen? Okay. Remain in my love. When you obey my commandments, if you don't know what a commandment is, the same as a commandment, all right? Obey my commandment, you remain in my love just as I obey my Father's commandments and remain in His love. I have told you these things so that you will be filled with my sourness. Now I want you to notice something that in both these verses we just read, there is a spirit that is present and it is a spirit of what? joy some of you are not happy enough some of your Christianity has made you sad which it should not the most joyful people on the planet should be people who love Jesus can I get a better amen than that so stop being a sour puss and thinking that that's spiritual Well, you know, I'm just hallelujah. No, hallelujah, nothing. You don't get it. Because the Bible says in the presence of the Lord, there's a little bit of joy. There's what? Say it again. There's what? Fullness. Come on, yell out. Fullness of joy. Uh, Jesus said that if you may, your joy will be full. That means complete. There's no lack to it. Why? Because it's not happiness. Happiness is determined by the circumstance. Joy is not. What's this? This is my suggestion. Love each other in the same way I have loved you. Huh? This is my what? Commandment. Try that again. We'll say that. You see, you said it real well. This is my what? Hallelujah. Love each other in the same way I have loved you. There is no greater love than to lay down one's life for one's friend. You are my friends if you do what I command. I no longer call you slaves because a master doesn't confine in his slaves. Now you are my friends since I have told you everything the Father told me. You didn't choose me. I chose you. I appointed you to go and produce lasting fruit so that the Father will give you whatever you ask for using my name. This is my command. You know that we shine when we love one another. And I want you to notice something in this, love, in this love commandment that's going on here. There's not a single thing that has to do with the way you feel. But the love that it is called personal self-sacrifice. It's the laying down. He says, love others as I have loved you. How does Jesus love us? He loved us by laying down his life for us. How do we love others? We love others by laying down our lives for them. By coming together, you are 
literally when we meet together corporately, we are laying aside our own agenda for a few hours and we are coming together. Why? Because we say it's good for me to be because there's somebody, hopefully in your heart today, you prayed and said, Lord, there's somebody that I don't, I don't know, but I'm going to share something with them that's going to help them. Because I'm going to the house of the Lord and I'm going to a place of worship where we fellowship by the Spirit of God. It is us together. Why? It is a command. This is not a suggestion. It is a command. How do we shine? When we love one another. Here's another thought. We shine through a united vision. Now listen to this. This is just a few uh, uh, chapters later. It's in the same in the same verbiage that Jesus is talking right before he goes to the cross. Look at this, John 15, uh, 17 verse 15. I'm not asking you, and this is he's now praying to the Father. I'm not asking you to take them out of the world. How many of you know most of us are praying to, for God to get us out of the world? Jesus praying just the opposite. Can I, can I get a weak amen? Oh, get, a, get me out, Jesus. Get me out. Burn the rest up. Hallelujah. Let them all go to hell because they want to. No. Jesus is praying this. I'm not asking you, Father, to take them out of the world, but to keep them safe from the evil one. They do not belong to this world any more than I do. So listen, the fact that we don't belong to the world doesn't mean God has not put us in the world. Okay? Make them holy by your truth. Teach them your word, which is what? Truth, just as you send me into the world, I am sending them into the world. And I give myself as a holy sacrifice for them so they can be made holy by your truth. I am not praying only for these disciples, but also for who? All who will what? Ever believe in me through their message, which is us. And this is the prayer. I pray that they all, somebody say all, all, will be what? One, just as you and I are one, as you are in me, Father, and I am in you. And may they be in us so that the world will believe you sent me. When the church begins to be what Jesus prayed for us to be, instead of wanting to leave all the time, Come on now, somebody. People say, well, Pastor, I don't believe in the rapture. Well, yeah, yeah, I've told you before, this is what I believe. If Jesus comes and he takes us, I go with Jesus. If Jesus comes and he stays, I'm staying with Jesus. But I'm going with Jesus wherever he goes. I'm not just looking for a way out. I'm looking for a way through. And here's what I know about the way through. As long as I follow Jesus, he'll lead me through. Because my Jesus sleeps in storms. My Jesus walks on stormy seas. That's my Jesus. I don't know about your Jesus, but that's my Jesus. My Jesus is not just meek and mild. My Jesus whipped death, hell, and the grave. My Jesus took sin by the throat and said, you are done for. That's my Jesus. My Jesus looked death in the eye and said, you are finished. That's my Jesus. My Jesus walk out of the grave because there's no one like him. There's no one compared to him. He is the beginning and the end. He is the first and the last. He is the Alpha, the Omega. He is the Rose of Sharon. He is the Lily of the Valley. He is the fairest of 10,000. There is no one like my Jesus. There's no King like my King. There's no Lord like my Lord. There's no Savior like my Savior. There's no Redeemer like my Redeemer. He is the light in which shines in the world and the darkness could not overcome it. The Darkness could not comprehend it. The darkness cannot put out the light of who He is. He is the way. He is the truth. He is the life. And it's in Him that I find my life and my peace. We shine when we understand who we are and we are united in a common vision. Stop praying for God to get you out of here and start praying for God to empower you to help someone else. Can I give you two more thoughts? Thank you so much for that permission, Tori. I was waiting for that. Can we recap real quick? So how do we shine? Number one, we shine through corporate how do we shine, number two, through mutual? How do we shine, number three, through united? 
vision. And number four, we shine through an unwavering commitment. I need you to listen to these words out of Philippians, and I'm reading them out of the message paraphrase. Listen to what Paul writes. He says, I'm not saying that I have this all together. Can we all give an amen to that? That I've made it. But I'm well on my way reaching out for Christ who has so wondrously reached out for me. Friends, don't get me wrong. By no means do I count myself an expert in all of this, but I've got my eye on the goal where God is beckoning us onward to Jesus. I'm often running and I'm not turning back. Somebody say, I'm not turning back. Come on, say it like you mean it. One more time. Look at verse 15. So let's keep focus on that goal. Those of us who want everything God has for us. Stop there for a moment. Is there anybody in this room? Is there anybody online? Is there anybody outside that say this morning, I want everything that God has for me? Come on. Is that you? Now watch. He's going to tell you. If, if you have anything, if you want what God wants, watch this. If any of you have something else in mind, something less than what? Look at this. It's not on there. Oh, man. Boy, that, that just lost the effect right there. <laughs> Leave that verse up. Let me back up. And then, then you'll be with me right there, okay? Are you okay? Yeah. If any of you have something else in mind, something less than what? God will clear your blurred vision. You'll see it yet. Now that we're on track, let's stay on it. Then he goes on, he says, stick with me, friends. Keep track of those you see running the same course, headed for the same goal. There are many out there taking other paths, choosing other goals, and trying to get you to go along with them. I've warned you of them many times. Sadly, I'm having to do it again. All they want is easy street. They hate Christ's cross, but easy street is a dead-end street. Those who live there, they make their bellies their gods. Belches are their praises. All they can think about is their appetites. But there's far more to life for us. We are citizens of high heaven. We're waiting the arrival of the Savior, the Master, Jesus Christ, who will transform our earthly bodies into glorious bodies like His own. He'll make us beautiful and whole with the same powerful skill by which He has put everything as it should be under and around Him. Mm. See, there's got to be some unwavering commitment in your heart. You got to make up your mind sooner or later who you're going to serve and what you're going to pursue. And he's worth pursuing. And then one more. And let's get ready with the communion elements. Would you pass me the communion elements? Because there's one more thought. And it is this. How do we shine? We shine through a shared table. We shine through a shared table. Watch this. 1 Corinthians 11 verse 23. Very well-known passages. For I pass on to you what I received from the Lord Jesus himself. On the night when he was betrayed, the Lord Jesus took some bread, gave thanks to God for it. Then he broke it in pieces and said, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup of wine after supper, saying, this cup is the new covenant between God and his people as agreement confirmed with blood, my blood. Do this in remembrance of me as often as you drink it. For every time you eat this bread and drink this cup, you are announcing the Lord's death until He comes again. So anyone who eats this bread or drinks this cup of the Lord unworthily is guilty of sinning against the body and blood of the Lord. That is why, somebody say, that's why you should examine yourself before eating the bread and drinking the cup. For if you eat the bread or drink the cup without honoring the body of Christ, you are eating and drinking God's judgment upon yourself. That is why many of you are weak and sick, and some have even died. But if we would examine ourselves, we would not be judged by God in this way. Yet when we are judged by the Lord, we are being disciplined so that we will not be condemned along with the world. Powerful, powerful words. How do we shine? We shine through celebrating the table of the Lord. You guys understand that the table of the Lord is not just something we should do once in a while. It's something that can be daily part of your life. When we come to the Lord's table, the important part is that He tells us over and over again that we must do something. We must examine ourselves. We must judge ourselves. Why? 
He says, so that we make sure that we are not sinning against the body of the Lord. What is he talking about? The context, and you can read it for yourself in that context, is because they mistreated one another. And they mistreated one another to such an extent that some of them even did not respect the Lord's table. And they, you know, they, they, they made it a thing of revelry and in the sense that they drank, they got drunk, they, you know, they didn't wait for one another, they didn't serve one another. How many of you know that Jesus is very, very much in love with His church? And I'm going to make a statement to you that might shock you. Do you know that Jesus is very, very much in love with the person sitting next to you? Well, let me say that again. Jesus is very, very in love with the person sitting next to you. Very much. And Jesus wants you to know that if you're born again, then you are part of His body. And He wants all of us to know that if we hurt one another, we don't just hurt one another, we are hurting Him. If we gossip about one another, we don't just gossip about another person. We are gossiping about the body of Christ. If we mistreat one another, you don't just mistreat a person. You mistreat a member of the body of Christ. And as a matter of fact, Paul writes and says, because of this way, because you've been treating one another like this, he says, some of you have chronic illness. You can't get healed and you wonder why. And he says the reason is because you are not discerning the Lord's body. And when he say the Lord's body, he's not just talking. You see what we have done, we, we, have, made it a, we have made it a transposition in the, se- in the sense of that we only think it's the body of Jesus on the cross. But what you don't understand, if you're born again, we are all members of his body. Hello, somebody. We are all members of his body. He is the head, we are the body. That means we are part of the body. And if you're part of the body of Christ, whatever touches you touches Jesus. So we have to be very careful and that's how we shine. When you gossip about somebody else, you have to remember if they're a born again Christian, whether you justify your gossip or not, what you are doing is you are tearing down the body of Christ. And he says, that's why some of you are sick. And then he says this, some of you have even died. And then we immediately will ask the question, just like they asked the question, and say, well, if they died, does it mean they they went to hell? No, he says, they died. You know why? Because God judged them. Why? Because they didn't judge themselves. So they're in heaven before their time. Because they refused to do what was supposed to be done, because there has to be unity within the body. We have to be very careful to remind ourselves. Let let me give you this illustration because it's so clear in the Bible. In Ephesians chapter 5, I know that we always appropriate these verses for marriage, and that's right, and that's true. But the primary message in Ephesians chapter 5 is not marriage. It is the connection between Christ and the church. The marriage is the secondary illustration to illustrate the primary reason why he's using the illustration. How many of you know when you use an illustration, you're trying to explain something? Come on, work with me here. You're trying to explain something. It's like when I give you an illustration, I'm trying to explain a truth, but the the important part is not the illustration, although that is part of it, but the most important part is the truth that's been trying to be communicated. So when Paul in Ephesians chapter 5 talks about marriage, he talks about it with the overarching understanding that he is talking about Christ and the church. He says, I speak a great mystery, yes, but yet I'm speaking about Jesus and the church. And then he tells us how much Jesus loved the church because he says, husbands, you ought to love your wives as what? As Christ loved the church. So do you know how much Christ loves the church, which you are? He's willing to lay down his life. So here's my question. If we are supposed to love one another like Jesus loved us, are you willing to lay down your life? Some of us, come on now, let let me just take a breath. I won't even look at you. I'm looking at the light. Some of you barely would lay down a couple of hours for church service. Some of you are already watching the clock right now and say, I thought it was going to be a short sermon. I mean, it's, 
You know, we got burgers cooking in the back. Doesn't he know I'm hungry? He just said, wait for one another. Did we not read that we ought to wait for one another? Here's my question to you as your pastor. I'm not the shipboat captain. I'm not here to make you happy. That's not my primary purpose. My primary purpose is to preach the gospel so Jesus makes you holy. And that's why sometimes when I preach the truth, you get offended. You get mad at me. Only Tori is the only one who never gets offended. The rest of you are working on it. Sometimes even my wife tells me, cut it out, cut it out. Isn't that the truth? But those are only other illustrations that I use, right? So we're about to go to the Lord's table. We go how? Together. So what issue do you have with someone else in the body that you need to correct? Because we ought to judge ourselves. Now, let me just say this. If you're not part of the body of Christ, communion is not for you. We get all mad you know, when somebody refuses somebody's communion because they're not living right. So how dare they? You know, who gave them the right? Well, if, you, if you're part of church government, you have a right to refuse communion to somebody who's not doing what God has called them to do. That's called church discipline. But the moment we talk about church discipline, we want to run away because, you know, we no longer can do that. How many of you understand that the church is weak and anemic because we're unwilling to do the things that need to be done? And why? Because we are, we're afraid that people are going to be mad and leave. My job is not to make you happy. My job is to get you to be like Jesus. That's my job. My job is to get you to the place where you are on fire for the purpose and plan of God, where you are more interested in honoring Him and honor others than your own agenda. And the Lord's table is the one place that no matter where we come from, no matter who we are, no matter what we've done, no matter how sinful your past has been, no matter how horrible things you have done, here's what we know today when we come to the Lord's table, that His blood has nailed my sin to the cross and cleansed it. And when you sit at the table with your brothers and sisters, you are sitting as an equal. Because we are one. That's how we shine. So let's take a moment. Would you bow your head with me? And let's just take a moment and do that. The Bible says that we ought to judge ourselves. I don't know about you. I'd rather judge myself than be judged by God. So let's consider the arenas in your life that you know is not wholesome. The arenas in your life that you know, and maybe you, you are a born-again Christian, or maybe you're not. Maybe you've, maybe you've never confessed Christ as Lord of your life. And guess what? Here's what you can do today. If you receive Him as your Lord, as your Savior, this can be your first communion as a brand new believer in Jesus. Because this is then for you. But if you've got some things in your life and I'm not just talking about sin in a vacuum. I'm talking about, especially relationally, you've mistreated, you've said things you shouldn't have said, you've done things you haven't uh, done, especially towards people who are part of His body. Then let's examine ourselves right now. And let's come before the Lord in, in humble, humble adoration with meekness and grace. I want you to take the bread right now. Would you just hold the bread in your hand? Just remove the top part of the communion elements. It's a little see-through cellophane that you can remove. And let's just take a moment and just wait on Him. Wait on one another. And I'm going to ask you straight out, if you have never embraced Jesus as the Lord and Savior of your life, would you do that today? Would you invite Him in? Would you give Him reigns? Those of you watching online, those of you sitting outside, those of you in this room, would you invite Him to come and be the Lord of your life? Or maybe you've got some things in your life that you just need to lay before His cross. Let me lead you in a prayer. If that's you, let's all pray this. 
Let's pray this out loud. Say, Lord Jesus, I thank you today that we can shine through a shared table. I thank you today that you broke the bread and that you said, this is my body which is broken for you. I thank you today that your body was broken for me. Today, I confess Jesus Christ as Lord of my life. I believe that He died in my place, that His body was broken for me. I receive that gift of mercy right now. Forgive me. Give me a fresh start. Wash away my past. I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. And I believe that you transform me now in Jesus' name. I am yours right now. Wash me. Cleanse me in your blood. Father, if there's anything in me that hurts the body, that hurts another person, if there's anything I've said, anything I acted on, in ways that I've behaved, I release that. I ask for forgiveness. Wash me. Cleanse me. Right now. In Jesus' name. And by faith, I proclaim the Lord's death. In Jesus' name. So with that, let's take the bread and partake of it right now. His body broken for you. Go ahead and do that. Just take the cup and remove the rest of that purple cellophane. If you struggle to remove it, ask somebody to help you because you're probably not spiritual enough. I'm just teasing. Sometimes it gets stuck. It's probably a sign of your life. But anyway. <laughs> Melis likes that one. This is a proclamation of victory. This is the cup of the new covenant. A new covenant that's based on better promises. Promises that are sealed not between you and the, the Father, but between the Father and the Son, which means it's unbreakable. And that's why no matter what you've done, no matter where you've been, no matter where you slept, no matter what you snorted, no matter what you smoked, no matter how rocky mountain high you have been or haven't been, there's grace. And you can receive that grace now because you are proclaiming that there's forgiveness for you in the blood of Jesus. So let's go ahead and do that as a body. Let's partake together in Jesus' name. Father, we bless your name. We bless the name of the Lord. We bless one another. And we thank you that you have carried us through it all. And right now, we place our complete trust in your favor. We, we place our complete trust in your faithfulness. We place our complete trust in your unending love and your unending grace. May great grace be evident on us all. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said, amen. amen and amen. Let's give the Lord a clap offering that he is worthy of. As we do, the worship team is going to minister a song for us.
Wasn't that good? Love what the psalmist says. He says, my eyes look to the hill from whence comes my help. How many realize there's help in the name of the Lord? The Bible says in Matthew 11, 28 and 29, it says that it says, come unto me, Jesus saying this, you who are burdened and heavy laden, he says, he'll give you rest. Did you realize when we come to Christ and we get in that place and communion with him, there's a rest in him. And that's that peace that Jesus says, while well, Paul talks about it in Philippians chapter 4, it's a peace that passes all understanding. And so if you're, this morning, if you're, you came in, you're carrying something, can I share something? Jesus wants to carry it for you. The Bible says, cast all your care. Not some of it, not just the ones you can handle. He says, cast all your care upon him, for he cares for you. Amen. It turns born into dancing, the sorrow to joy. Though tears and love the night, always joy in the morning. He gives the oil of joy and the garment of praise. So I lift my hands and worship, and strongholds will raise. As I lift my hands and worship, Strongholds will break. His eye is on the sparrow, and his eye is on me. I won't worry about tomorrow, even when I can see. He will carry your burden, so I just lay it down. He will.
your burdens just lay it down amen and amen isn't that good I just want you to know that Pastor David and them wrote that song specifically for today. And uh, I just think that was really, really special. Well, uh, we did one sacrament that the Lord instituted. Now we're going to do the next sacrament that the Lord instituted. So I'm going to ask the first group of baptism candidates that uh, you come. And uh, we are going to uh, get ready to baptize them. And let me just, yeah, come on, let's give them a great hand. So uh, let me just uh, uh, just remind you that uh, uh, we have a little space right here for families. If you want to come up and uh, take some pictures, uh, uh, you, can, you can do that. We do have a few folks that will take pictures as well, but uh, um, j just so that you know. You know, uh, you know the, the important part of this is that this is what we call identification. Somebody say identification. So what these folks are saying is they're saying that, you know what, we are in Christ. We are buried with Him, and uh, as we are buried with Him, we are raised to a new life in Him. And uh, we are cutting off the old, and we are believing God for brand spanking new. And baptism is not just a, a ritual that we do, it's a sacrament. That means it is a holy thing. And, uh, you know, as, we, as you know, we baptize a lot of people here at The Rock, and we usually do it, do it during worship uh, services and uh, different occasions. But we felt we wanted to bring baptism to you. This way, you can participate. Now, I want you to know that this is a time, the only other time you should be more happy should be when you give. Because God loves a what? That's the only, that's hilarious. So that's the only other time you should be more happy than this. Because this is, we are being obedient to Matthew 28 that says, Go into all the world, make disciples of every nation, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And that's exactly what we are doing. So uh, that means, you say, Pastor Andy, how do you want it? I want it loud. I want it crazy. I want it happy. All right, are you okay? Come on now, somebody. Let's celebrate new life. Kerry, come on, step up. <laughs> we got you, sweetheart. You can go ahead and just let's take one more step. Beautiful, beautiful. You can hold on, hold on to my hand so that way we're going to go ahead and just take a seat. There you go. Gary, let me ask you a question. Have you received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? Yes, I have. Now, upon the profession of your faith on the Lord Jesus Christ, we baptize you now in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Oh, come on, let's give a big, God bless you. You need to get in here before you run away. The pastor been warning to Dougley for a long time. Yeah, I yeah. yeah. Uh, now, Bayless, I'm going to have to keep under for a little bit, so. You ain't right, man. <laughs> Bayless has been one of those wiggly fish. That you catch, you know, he thought it was catch and release. <laughs> he didn't know it was catch and keep. Oh, Lord, oh, Lord, oh, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bayless, have you received Jesus Christ oh, as your Lord gosh, and Savior? I'm getting ready, brother. I told you, I'm on that road and I'm happy. Yeah, that's so awesome. Well, Bayless, on the profession of your faith in the Lord Jesus, we baptize you now in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Yes, sir. Yes, <laughs> I'm happy about this one. Let me tell you something. Thank 
Teresa? Yes, it is. Hi there, sweetheart. That's my daughter telling you. Oh, wow. Well, that is awesome, Mama. Teresa, go ahead. Have a seat. Okay. Teresa, have you received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? I have. Now, upon the profession of your faith, we baptize you now in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Kirsten? Step one down. Yeah, it's nice. Let's go ahead and have a seat, Kirsten. Kirsten, have you received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? Yes. Now, upon the profession of your faith, it is my privilege to baptize you now in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Thank you. Oh, come on, let's celebrate. Yeah. Jose. Uh, don't worry, I got you, Jose. <laughs> Go ahead, have a seat, Jose. Jose, have you received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? Yes, I have. Now, upon the profession of your faith on the Lord Jesus Christ, we baptize you now in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Thank you, my friend. Amen. Oh, come on, let's celebrate. Yeah. I want you to take just a moment and pay attention to the screen. Hi, my name is Roy Bolt and I belong to The Rock Church. I um, have been enjoying the uh, Be Salty campaign. Uh, I lead a couple home groups, uh, small groups in this uh, time. And it's just, it's so exciting to listen and to share these messages that Pastor Henny has been bringing to us about being salty and what it means to grab hold of your faith and start acting on that faith. And so we have, I have hundreds of, of examples, but some of the best things that have happened in our small groups is um, we've been able to pray for people. We have, one, in one of our small groups, we had a guy who was climbing down some rocks. He lost the whole soles of his feet. We prayed for this guy for about a year. And today that guy's out in the water again surfing just amazing how God hears our prayers and then answers those prayers and it's just I can't tell you how many prayers have been answered in our small groups and and we are growing as men uh, in this one small group uh, sharing and caring and and understanding what we're all going through and and building faith because this is what it's about it's about faith in Jesus understanding the word as Pastor Henny is bringing it to us I think that's one of the most outstanding things that are going on right now in our small groups. I have another small small group that I started just recently with, uh, it's open to couples, and uh, just to hear people share their experiences and some of the things they're struggling with and being able to pray with them and encourage them and have faith. You know, like I, like I said, faith is, is the big thing that I've been hearing throughout this series on being salty. I, I just want to share with you how important it is for you guys to come and be a part of our small groups. I, you're missing it. You're missing out on, on growing and understanding what, what the Word is calling us to and, and the joy and the peace and the ha I'm telling you, you, you can't understand until you go to a small group and then you can feel the comfortability of being there and understanding what God has for you. It, it's a whole new dynamic, so please come. Come and join us. Amen. Well, let's get our next uh, uh, set of baptism candidates. Ashley.
Ashley, have you received Jesus as your Lord and Savior? Yes. Upon the profession of your faith, we baptize you now in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. We got Jesus. Jesus, I love your name. Well, Jesus, on the profession of your faith, let me just ask you, have you received Jesus as the Lord and Savior of your life? Yes. Upon the profession of your faith, we baptize you now in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. brother from another mother. Wayne, what can I say? It's been a long time coming, hasn't it? I just want you to know, as your pastor, I'm proud of you. You, 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 you have walked a tough road, but you know what? His grace is more than enough more than enough I mean, God's wholeness and, and it's not only just part of your life but also of our girl's life and we trust that and so today as you make a public profession of your faith and letting everybody know who has your allegiance yeah. I want you to know he's got you yeah. he's got you so let me ask you my friend have you received Jesus Christ so upon the profession of your faith, we baptize you now in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Oh, come on, let's give him a great God bless you. Derek, hi. Want to get in for us? Hey, I got. Jump in? <laughs> <laughs> there you go. One more step down, Derek. Okay. Yeah, it's a little slippery. There you go. And then go ahead and have a seat. Okay. It is, isn't it? <laughs> you, you probably want to stay in here. <laughs> The only problem is this is signifying of death, otherwise we have to leave you under. So I don't think Derek wants that, right? <laughs> You're not ready. No, we're not we're not there yet. Well Derek, let me ask you a question. Have you received Jesus as your Lord and Savior? Absolutely. Now listen, on the profession of your faith, it is my honor and privilege to baptize you now in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Take a deep breath. seat, Laura. How awesome. How awesome is this? Yeah. It's awesome. Yeah. You've taken a, a road, but guess what? That road has led straight to him. Amen. Straight to him. And he just wants you to know today that his arms surround you. His favor has found you. His yeah. mercy will bless you. His grace will keep you. Yeah. And his light will continue guiding you through his word. So 
it is my honor and privilege to ask you, have you received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? Yes. Now, Lord, upon the profession of your faith, we baptize you now in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Oh, come on, let's give a shout, somebody. Hey, isn't it great to be part of somebody else's story? Come on, isn't it good to celebrate what God is doing? He's doing it through you. Amen? That's what God does. Boy, do I love it. All right. Well, let's focus our attention on the screen. Hi, I'm Jamal. And I'm Marquita. Tell us, and uh, we're part of the Marriage Rocks leadership team. Uh, and we're just so blessed to be here today to talk to you about some of the things that have gone on at the Marriage Rocks uh, with the Summer Rocks as, as a whole. Um, Marriage Rocks had an uh, ice cream social this summer. Uh, it was absolutely amazing. We had a great time. Oh, yeah. It was, it was so cool just seeing just the church come together, but, I mean, just community. It was kind of like your family, you know, gathering. <laughs> yeah. It was, honestly was just a joyous time. There was just laughter and there was just, you know, just a true love for each other. The biggest thing about the whole ice cream social was community. Yeah. That was the biggest thing that stood out. And, you know, Sundays are great. We get the chance to meet and greet each other while we're at church. But like these are the moments that like you really get to know people, right? So we get together, we have conversation, you're learning about everybody, you're building that, that, that relationship from people that you see coming and going every single week. So this whole uh, summer has been about community. Uh, during the Be Salty campaign, I mean, there's been so many different events that the Rock Church has put together. We've been able to be a part of uh, Rock Men and Rock Women. I attended the Rock Men camping retreat. Man, that was a blast. Getting together with a bunch of guys, toughing it out. I'm not going to lie, man. In the summertime, we're here in California, but man, the mountains get cold in the summer. Uh, but overall, man, it was it was an awesome time. You have that time to just be intentional. Um, you're intentional in learning more about God, getting deeper with God, and and, and really relating to uh, with each other. So being a part of that was amazing. Yeah, just like with Rock Women, just seeing... Uh just a plethora of women come together to worship God, to laugh, to, um, you know, share stories and testimonies. So um, there's a panel of women who are talking, and one of the women was talking about how she had a sense of being nervous, but how she, when she ended up going to Rock Women, just how that community surrounded her, and now she's serving. She has women that she relates to. And I was like, man, that's kind of like how old I felt or you know at times feel uh, nervous sometimes when uh, you know called to serve because I'm like oh my gosh I'm going to meet new people it honestly is like allowing God to use you where you're at when you serve you're not only blessing somebody else but you're getting blessed too that encouraged me to take what I learned and witnessed from the tea party and actually take it to other communities that I'm a part of because, um, you know, we always say that, you know, this is a building, we are the church, we truly are the church, you know, so the church travels, it's mobile. And so I'm just really grateful that God brought us to a community here because not only has he grown us, but he's blessed people to surround us. And I think that has grown me and I know grown us together um, in, in our marriage to, uh, you know, just take that with us wherever, you know, we go. When we got involved, when we decided to, to really serve and to really uh, tap into the community within all the different ministries here at the church, I mean, God has lit a fire. And yeah. God has done some amazing things in our life, um, and He's still doing amazing things. And mm -hmm. um, I think it's just really important that when you're in those moments of struggle, that's when the community comes to play. Um, you know, just being a part of Marriage Rocks, I mean, the, the couples that are in Marriage Rocks, we just love on them. And uh, they've been a blessing to us just as much as we've been a blessing to them. And uh, I just think community is important. And so I truly do encourage you, please, 
get involved, get, yeah. get a part of, of the Rock Church and, and understand that the mission that this church is doing is changing lives for Jesus. And uh, it's just amazing. Amen and amen. Well, let's get our uh, last set up here. And uh, um, can we give them a great hand? Come on out, somebody. Uh, Aline. It's nice and warm, Aline. Hi there. Aline, let me ask you this. Have you received Jesus as your Lord and Savior? Yes. Well, now, upon the profession of your faith on the Lord Jesus, we baptize you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Glory, glory. Amy, welcome. You got it. Best, Ray. Take your time. No, no, no hurry. Yeah. That'll feel good on the hip and the knee, huh? Well, Ray, just uh, um, what a privilege it is. What an honor. Let me ask you this, my friend: Have you received Jesus as your Lord and Savior? Now, upon the profession of your faith, Ray, we baptize you now in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Thank you. There you go. Thank you. Proud of you, Ray. I got you. He's just brave. Amen. Come on, let's give Ray a God bless you. I got you, Alondra. Step down one. Yes, there you go. Alondra, let me ask you this. Have you received Jesus as your Lord and Savior? Yes. Now, upon the profession of your faith on the Lord Jesus Christ, we baptize you now in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Oh, come on, let's give a shout out for Caleb. <laughs> Caleb, I just want you to know, the Bible said, those who are last will be first. So in heaven, you're first in line. How cool is that? And I know because I've seen you around and I've seen you be part of even the internship program. I know that mama took it, but you, took, uh, you were the guy that listened more to me than anybody else. While they were, while they were just waffling and playing on their games, they, you were right there with me. You're the only one who said amen, hallelujah. That's Caleb. Caleb took the internship program, and he didn't even sign up. Imagine that. Mama made him, but he did it anyway. Caleb, let me ask you, have you received Jesus as your Lord and Savior? Now, upon the profession of your faith, my friend, I baptize you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Oh, come on, let's give the Lord a shout that He is worthy of. Woo! Man, oh man, oh man, isn't God good? 
Oh, what a day to celebrate His goodness. Now, let me ask you this, church. What kind of giver does God love? Whose heart is where? In their giving. Let's honor the Lord today. For those of you online, for those of you in the house, for those of you outside, let's honor the Lord today with our tithes and offerings. And uh, it's just, it's such, an, it's such a great way of just continuing our worship. I want if you know, when you give unto the Lord, you are worshiping Him. How many of you know when you give unto the Lord, you're worshiping Him? Amen. So let's continue our worship. And, uh, um, you know, the, the announcements will show you how you can give and how you can be a cheerful giver. Also, I want you to know, uh, you need to do something for me today, is you can walk outside of the room and you can check on where we are at with our building fund for South Africa. I, I, I am just blown away by your generosity, and I want to say thank you, thank you, thank you, Rock Church, uh, because we are more than 60%. We've raised more than 60% of what we need to raise, and we have done that in two and a half months. And we've given, you, we've given you all the way until next year, but I want you to know, thank you for doing this because the job is getting done. And you are not only making a difference here from these lives that you know that have changed, from these interns, you are making a difference in places that you don't, you've never even been to and you might never go to. But guess what? One day, one day when you are standing before your father, you will hear these words, well done. And you'll be surprised on the fruit of what you have been able to give and the difference that you have been able to make. Thank you, Rock family. So let's check out uh, the announcements. Let me just remind you of something, and I'll let you know here in a few minutes. But uh, be patient when you go out there because they're cooking the burgers fresh. So pack your patience. As a matter of fact, I should pray for patience right now, the way you responded. And how does God test your patience? It makes you wait. So uh, we don't want to wait too long. Amen. So, well, let's check out. Let's give unto the Lord and let's check out the rest of the announcements today. Hello, Rock Church. My name is Mariah, and I'm part of the leadership team here, and we are so glad that you joined us for our one service this morning. It has been an incredible and very special time, but hang tight because service is not over yet. I'm here to let you know about all the exciting things that are happening here at the Rock Church, but also give you all the details about the church barbecue that is following church service. But before I get into any of that, it is time for the most joyful time of service which is our tithes and offerings. Church, what kind of giver does God love? That's right, a cheerful giver whose heart is in their giving. And right now we have the opportunity to be cheerful and obedient in our giving through our tithes and offerings. On the screen right now, there are various ways to give. You can give through PayPal, through Kindred, you can give through our app, our website. You can also text to give. All you have to do is text the dollar amount that you would like to give to the number on the screen. And if you're on campus, there are various drop boxes around the sanctuary and the four-year area. Thank you so much, Rock Church, for partnering with us as we reach this Temecula Valley and beyond. Now, while you're currently giving or preparing to give, I have a couple quick announcements for you. On Sunday, August 21st, we have the pleasure of hosting special guest speaker, Dr. Baron Gilflin. Dr. Barron is the founder of the International School of Ministry, which is a Bible college program that is offered all over the globe. ISOM is in over 70 different languages and it has trained and equipped leaders all over the globe to fulfill the Great Commission. Be sure to join us on August 21st for an incredible word from Dr. Barron. Do you have friends or loved ones that you would like to share your faith with, but you feel too unequipped and don't know how to? Well, here at The Rock Church, we have the perfect class for you. On Sunday, August 28th, we will be hosting an interactive evangelism workshop, and you're not going to want to miss this. You already have the tools in your arsenal. We just want to help you utilize them. If you would like to sign up for the workshop, you can visit the 411 information station after service, or you can visit our website, gotrock.org. 
For our final Summer Rocks event, our children's ministry will be hosting a block party. This is an all church, all community outreach, and you are not gonna wanna miss this. It is happening on Saturday, August 27th from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. It's gonna be a full day of fun activities for the whole family. We need at least 100 volunteers and there is a place for you to be one of them. This is a great opportunity for us to work together to serve our community and pour out the love of Jesus on everyone. For more information and to sign up to volunteer, you can head out to the 411 information station after service. And thank you so much Rock Church for partnering with us and we cannot wait to serve the community and have a full day of fun. Well, those are all the exciting things that are happening here at The Rock Church. For more information, be sure to head out to the 411 Information Station after service. You can also follow us on our various social media platforms, such as Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. You can also visit our website, gotrock.org, for all things The Rock Church. Now, church, it's the moment you've all been waiting for, where I give you all the details about today's church barbecue. Immediately after service is dismissed, the barbecue will begin, and here are all the things that you need to know. The barbecue will be happening all over the church, in the courtyard, the cafe area, and out back. There are bounce houses, there's a boxing ring, there is also a water slide. There are also many lawn games that are happening throughout the back area. If you have any children in children's ministry this Sunday, parents, please be sure to pick up your children as soon as service is dismissed because you are not going to want to have them miss any of the fun that's happening. Because so much is going on, parents, please be sure to supervise your children at all times. Along with all the lawn games and bounce houses, we also have fun scheduled activities. First, at 1230, we are having a junior watermelon eating contest, and that is for ages 6 to 12 years old. Next, at 1245, we are having a water balloon toss competition. That is for all ages. Then after, at 1 p.m., is our adult watermelon eating contest. That is for ages 12 years old and up. Then our last activity at 1.15 is a special water balloon game that you are not gonna wanna miss. Now, if you wanna participate in any of the watermelon eating contests, be sure to sign up. If you didn't catch all the times, that's okay. We will be letting everyone know what's going on throughout the duration of the barbecue. And last, but definitely not least, there will be food. There will be in and out trucks here. And don't worry everyone, there is plenty of food. You have a few options. You can get a cheeseburger, a hamburger, or a grilled cheese. And the best part is, they are free. You can also get a free drink and chips with your lunch. The cafe will also be open selling special treat drinks, and our children's ministry is hosting a snow cone fundraiser where you can get a snow cone for only $2. It's not too late to invite someone to meet you here at the church. We love you so much, Rock Church, and we look forward to the rest of the day. Oh, come on, let's celebrate God's goodness today. Amen and amen. I just want you all to stand with me right now and... Uh, um, I'm going to bless you and pray over the food. I want to remind, I do want to invite the prayer teams to the front. Uh, if you do need prayer for anything, let them pray with you and for you as well. And then if you prayed that prayer with us earlier in the service uh, and uh, you made a commitment to the Lord, there's a couple of things you can do. You can either text decided to 94,000, decided to 94,000, or in the seat pocket in front of you, there's a little blue card that says, I have decided. It looks just like the one here uh, behind me. You can fill that out. And uh, there's a couple of things you can do with it. You can drop it uh, in any one of the communication boxes on the wall throughout the building. Or the best thing to do is take it right outside uh, through those uh, doors and uh, our fresh start table is right over there. And uh, you can just hand it to them and they will help you to know what it is, what's the next step to take. If you are online with us and you prayed with us for the first time, we encourage you to text Decided to 94000 and somebody will reach out to you during the week and let you know what is available to help you in this journey. Hey, has this been a good morning? Come on, has this been a good morning? Amen. Well, let me pray over you and let me bless the food. Father, I thank you for your people. 
I pray that you bless them right now. And uh, I thank you for your provision. Bless this food to our bodies. We cast out all calories in Jesus' name. And we thank you for the freedom to enjoy above all else. Enjoy one another's company. Enjoy the community of the Spirit. And enjoy fellowshipping with one another. Bless your people with your presence and your peace. Watch over them. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said, Amen and Amen. We love you. Go get some food. Oh, there's no sound louder than the captain set free. Come on. Oh, there's no sound louder than the captain set free. Oh, there's no sound louder than the captain set free. One more time. Oh, there's no sound louder than the captain set free. Oh, let the redeemer of the Lord sing so.